Welcome to Critical Junction Episode 4. I'm Mark. I'm Jose. And today we're talking about conspiracy theories. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Obviously we won't, we won't have time to talk about all of them because there are a lot of crazy conspiracies out there. So um, if there's one we haven't talked about that you'd like us to, uh, to delve into a little bit more in a future episode, leave us a comment, let us know what you think, and we'll pick it up from there. Um, so yeah, I guess while doing a little bit of research for today's episode, I uh, stumbled on a, a video by Alex Jones notorious American conspiracy theorist. It's just reading up on him, that's funny. Yeah, yeah. and uh, in this video, he's accusing both Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama of being legit demons from hell. <laughs> yep. And like his reasoning behind it was that he had spoken to somebody in the security sector who said they were around both of them at some point and they smelled like sulfur or something. Hmm. So, yeah, he's he's accusing them of being legit demons. Like, actual demons. All because of the sulfur, huh? All because of the sulfur. Ah, oh, jeez. No. Like, it was so bad that President Obama, in one of his speeches, was actually... He actually brought this up. He was like, Keep, what is going on here? Like, what, what is that about? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, let's... I thought that was funny. <laughs> it, it's pretty funny. And, I mean, the whole... Even the word conspiracy theory, I mean, when you talk about it, it's an immediate ridicule, right? Right. Like, and nobody... If you're using the word, it's more like, all right, well, there has to be some sort of imbalance, psychological, mental illness of some sort <laughs> in order for you to believe anything. Well, some, so, some of them are really, really out there. I, mean, yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with David Icke at all. No. Okay. Well, he – let me just pull this up actually because – it's yeah okay so he's a an English writer and public speaker this is from Wikipedia by the way a former footballer and sports broadcaster um, Ike has made his name since the 1990s as a professional conspiracy theorist I don't know how you become a professional conspiracy theorist <laughs> is there like a course you can take on that or something but he calls himself a full time investigator uh, into who and what is really controlling the world so he's the author of over 20 books and numerous DVDs and has lectured in over 25 countries speaking for up to 10 hours to audiences that cut across the political spectrum wow I can't imagine sitting down for 10 hours and listening to this guy. Yeah, really. He's most famous for for saying that, uh, you know, a lot of famous world leaders like the Queen of England or Barack Obama, again, Barack Obama seems to come up a lot. <laughs> his theories. Yeah. But he says that they're actually reptilian aliens in human disguise who are secretly ru running the planet. I always thought he was the Antichrist. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> who, Ike or Barack Obama? Barack Obama. <laughs> that, was, that was a whole other conspiracy theory is that he's actually the Antichrist. I've heard, I've heard of that one. There's also... Uh, there's like some kind of prophecy saying that he's going to be the last U.S. president. Um, I believe it. <laughs> I can believe it. Yeah. <laughs> What's happening right now? The election is just a few days. The away. last real president. So, yeah. <laughs> until Emperor Trump comes in and destroys the world for us. Yeah, um, or crooked Hillary. So yeah. crooked Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> so which which theories were you reading up on earlier? Um. Well. There's the whole uh, world domination. Is so uh, the New World Order? The New World Order, right. and it's talking about the the Rockefellers and how they are the richest family in history, in American history, and global history, I guess. And it's all about a plan to basically um, set certain things, uh, as an example, I guess. Uh, you know, there's mind control. There's, uh, oh, the chips within, like, you know, you get chips implanted into you, and it's supposed to be the easier way to kind of mobilize yourself, uh, like, you know, debit transactions, cash transactions, or whatever it is. So you're talking but, about those RFID chips? Yes, the exactly. The radio frequency? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, there's the whole conspiracy surrounding that, that uh, even the, <clears throat> I was reading a part of it as, uh, you know, how they would basically uh, give... Uh, arms and uh, you know guns and things like that to uh, start world wars or certain wars in order for them to kind of gain more uh, funding or you know right and, yeah so it's like there's just so much surrounding it and uh, the other parts that I was reading um, well I guess let's see here the start to the conspiracy theory I think I mentioned that to you yesterday the uh, the word itself kind of derived from JFK's assassination. And, uh, is that actually a thing? Like, is that that's, that's actually a thing? That's here. a documented case. Yeah, yeah. So here, this is uh, according to John Iotto's 20th Century Words. Um, so the phrase conspiracy theory was originally a neutral term and only acquired a, a uh, like sort of the negative connotation in the mid 60s. So it had to do with the JFK assassination. 
Um, and it basically implies that the advocate of the theory has a paranoid tendency to imagine the influence of some powerful and malicious, you know, covert agencies and events. Really? So, yeah. I did um, not know it came from that. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. Then. Yeah, for sure. I mean, well, the whole thing was basically it started off as the CIA trying to discredit conspiracy theorists. Um, and yeah, um, let's see here. I'm so why, why, would the, why would the CIA have a vested interest in, in, you know, debunking conspiracy theories? Well, the whole thing was that, uh, apparently they, uh, mind controlled, uh, I forget buddy that, uh, assassinated JFK there, but uh, right, right. that he was basically brainwashed or being mind controlled in some way in order for him to assassinate the president. So, you know, so who did the brainwashing? Apparently, it was the CIA. So the CIA brainwashed Lee Harvey Oswald into assassinating JFK. Yes. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. that's basically where the whole thing started, and the CIA worked really hard to kind of discredit any conspiracy theorists that actually believe these things. So, you know, that's basically where it all comes from. But there are kind of like um, uh, other stories, other like uh, conspiracy theories uh that come back as far back as like the 1870s. Really? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> those are, how would we even document those? Well, that's not too far back, I guess. But, okay, like, which ones are we talking about? Um, well, I don't know about the 1870s, but uh, have you ever heard of the uh, Jonestown uh, murders? Uh, the name sounds familiar, but I can't remember exactly what that's about. Okay, well, <clears throat> um, it's basically claims that the CIA was conducting kind of more mind control experiments, and it was where... I think it was a 912, who was it? Yeah, let me take a look. Uh, so, yeah, it was basically sort of a religious group that started away from the People's Temple. So, American religious organization that was uh, under the leadership of Jim Jones in northwestern Guyana. And so it became uh, internationally notorious when uh, 918 people died in the... Uh, remote uh, airstrip in Katuma, Port Katuma, and in Georgetown, which uh, is the capital of Guyana. And yeah, so out of those 918 people, 909 of them were Americans. Holy shit. Yeah. So basically, all but two were apparent like cyanide poisonings. Uh, and the whole thing was basically called a revolutionary suicide. There were survivors, and those survivors basically are saying that it wasn't a suicide. It was actually a mass murder. Really? Yeah. And this was carried out by the CIA? Well, that's the whole thing is that, you know, it's Jim Jones was kind of the one doing – it's a cult, you can call it, and that's sort of a name that we you know give religions that we don't like. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's – it was basically under the leadership of him, but they're saying that the CIA was mind controlling him in order to carry out these, you know, events. That's that seems I, the CIA seems to be at the center of a lot of conspiracy theories. Like, yeah, like, for sure. I mean, apparently they even let uh, Hitler live. You know. That, yeah, I was. That's another one that came up in today's research. Uh, like Hitler didn't actually commit suicide. Um, you know, in the bunker uh, that was some kind of body double, and he fled to Argentina. Yeah. Um, there mm -hmm. were apparently interviews with some of the residents, the local residents in the area that he fled to, who were saying that we know who this is, but we can't tell anyone because they're, they're going to kill us. Yeah. I. That seems. Very far-fetched. Very far-fetched, but, you know, the funnier thing about that is that uh, the CIA, after, what is it, 60 years, their uh, files have to be released mm -hmm. to the public. Well, that came from the files that the CIA released. Did it? Yes. <laughs> so that's why this whole conspiracy theory started, was because it came straight from the CIA's documentations themselves from 60-some years ago, or whatever, some years ago. If I were a counter um, counter conspiracy theorist, I would say that maybe the CIA is planting that. For sure, they <laughs> definitely could. But why plant something where you're just gonna like, you know, highlight uh, when black marker everything so that you don't disclose anything? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's the thing with disclosure evidence. They 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 blacklist or black mark everything yeah. that would be deemed to be you know uh, damaging to national security or some kind of secret that they don't want to actually reveal. Yeah. Um, that's why. It, most of the UFO documents that are that are released really don't say anything at all. Yeah, and that continues to feed 
that particular conspiracy theory so sure. like we talked about this in our first episode how uh, you know the government is hiding ufo technology that they're using to develop their own technology to to whoever whatever end i have no idea <laughs> um, but yeah the cia seems to be at the center of this mainly because i think they're you know they're big and powerful and no one really knows what happens behind their closed doors yeah. so that always kind of kind of breeds speculation and resulting conspiracy theories yeah for sure i mean uh it doesn't necessarily just have to be the cia it could be other organizations i mean the like as an example watergate scandal i don't know if you know much about the watergate scandal mm -hmm. but uh, i mean it was when nixon was in his presidency what was it 60 whatever Correct. and um yeah, basically, there was a, a break-in into the uh, headquarters near the uh, Watergate complex, and the whole thing was surrounding the money that they had stolen and using it for their, you know, next election yeah. uh, and things like that. And, you know, if you don't know about it, read up on it. It's really interesting stuff. Basically, it ended up that Nixon had to resign his presidency, and what was it, Gerald Ford stepped in right after? Yeah. So, I mean, you know. <laughs> it's it's really crazy to think that that alone is actually not even considered a conspiracy theory. No, like that that actually you know it happened. That happened. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But yeah, um, what was the other one? The, are you familiar with the the conspiracy theory surrounding the Denver airport? While you know, while while we're on the topic of the New World Order, hmm. uh, so there was the it's the Denver airport is massive. It's apparently there's. Well, according to the conspiracy theory, there's this underground bunker where the world's elite are going to, you know, they're going to end up whenever they destroy the world mm -hmm. through all these black flag operations and decimate the human population. Yep. And there are a couple of murals in there that seem to depict that same kind of situation happening. Really? Uh, yeah, like huh. they, it's a bunch of soldiers who are, you know, kind of subjugating humanity in there. But they actually, they interviewed the artist who did these murals in the airport. And he's like, well, uh, no, that's... Not at all what I was trying to represent with this. <laughs> um, we'll post a link to his actual interview in the uh, the description because I can't remember offhand exactly what he said. But mm -hmm. I just it there's nothing ominous about this. It's 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 an airport in mm -hmm. Denver. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. And just because it it received millions of dollars in renovation funds, and I think that's where a lot of people seem to seem to think well why are they giving so much money to this airport why is it so big why are why is it this why is it that hmm. well there's a reason for everything like the, the dedication plaque in the denver airport was you know it was, it's laid down there by freemasons yeah and as soon as the freemasons get involved <laughs> in anything things take a turn for the worse yeah. people start assuming they're controlling the world yeah What's your take on the Freemasons? Well, I mean, they've been around forever now, and uh, they include members such as the Bushes, the, uh, I think the Rockefellers are part of that, uh, uh, you know, just the richest people in the world in history, and it's, it's, it's hard to believe that they wouldn't, you know, do sort of a, a global uh, overtaking, but again, they have the funding for it, so... Well, that why would they though? I mean, there's they're an old boys club, but like George Washington was a Mason, which again immediately as soon as people realize, oh my God, George Washington was a Freemason, <laughs> he must be part of the global elite, you know, yeah. and that laid the foundation for all these other global elites controlling the world. Yeah. But the Freemasons aren't a, uh, like a nefarious organization. Yeah. They're an old boys club. They get together, they drink beer, and they you know they shoot the shit. As far as I know, they're like any other. Um, fraternal organization what about the uh, the rituals that they do in uh oh god i forget what it's called uh are you talking uh, about bohemian grove? yeah the bohemian grove where they're like basically uh praising the owl or whatever <laughs> yeah that's exactly but the they're not freemasons that's bohemian grove those are crazy rich assholes getting together and worshiping this giant owl for god knows whatever reason aren't they within the same group though I no, no 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 oh, okay. well, some of them might be freemasons but they're mm. like they're just elite rich fucking dicks who get together at, at this place and do all kinds of crazy shit that rich dicks do. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently they're the ones that select the next president. So I That's mean, what I've heard. Yeah. Uh, like them and the, the Bilderbergs also. The Bilderbergs, yes. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, 
former Prime Minister Stephen Harper was at a Bilderberg meeting. Hmm. Uh, Alex Jones was in town whenever that meeting was taking place, and he was out there, you know, protesting along with the other people, like, bring down the New World Order, <laughs> yelling crazily, old man shakes stick at sky kind mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like, as soon as you have a, a group of elite people who gather together behind closed doors and have any kind of secrecy, people will assume that they're that they're up to no good. Yeah, for sure. Because they're these people are at a completely different level than the rest of us. Yeah. And you know, what kind of that, it's all assumption, really. I of mean, course. Yeah, but there are like certain things, uh, as an example, like the uh, Forbes magazine that that kind of you know takes the uh, wealthiest. Uh, right. That, like uh, the top wealthiest and, people. Yeah, and they're not even included in there, so it. it it's kind of like, well, why? You know, like mm-hmm. they can't be making that much money that they can't be included in this magazine. But yet every year they just they don't include them. So the question is, why? Why don't they include them? Is it like they have so much resource that, you know, they don't secretly need to like they don't want to maybe? Like, uh, you know? <laughs> Well, what about let's take the example of Mark Zuckerberg, yeah. creator of Facebook. Yeah. Do you think he's one of. The New World Order global elites. Now he has billions of dollars. I wouldn't think so. Well, neither would I. No. But I guess some people might. But really? the thing is, he didn't. He wasn't born into that echelon of society. Really? Huh? Well, Zuckerberg. No, he was like he's a. What was he? He dropped out of what Harvard? Or yeah. Something? Okay. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. When he created Facebook, so mm-hmm. he went like to, why? Yeah. There's no reason that he would even be part of this. Right. Yeah, so. But just because he has so much money, mm. people say he's part of the global elite. Ah uh, no. Money, I don't think, like, having money gets you included into this, like, group, but the ones that have already been rich enough for however long, like, it's been, I mean, the Rockefellers have been around for years yeah. now. Yeah, like they're old money. Yeah, 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 and they're oil money, too. Yeah. And when you're talking oil money, I mean, that's a lot of money. You're talking in the trillions. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know, for, the, for Forbes to, like, you know, put out the richest people, uh, in the billions, that's not even close to what these guys are making. That's very true. <laughs> like yeah. that, that just Rockefeller himself. The amount of money that this like family has combined probably is more than what the top wealthiest people are in the world. They have a crazy amount of money. Uh, like they, they can they can buy and sell people. Yeah, you know, <laughs> if they wanted to. Yeah. So yeah, like. It wouldn't they actually do I would say that they actually do control a lot of what happens mm-hmm. you know just because they can afford to do it they they are a powerful family mm-hmm. and as soon as somebody has that kind of power then I guess other people would assume that they would automatically control the rest of the masses yeah. and that's where a lot of these conspiracies stem from um, another one is the the conspiracy surrounding c- climate change. Hmm. This one really bothers the fuck. <laughs> but people people are saying that climate change is a hoax being perpetrated. Originally, the first one came out and was that uh, climate change is a is a hoax perpetrated or created by the EU in order to bring down the U.S. economy. Okay, that's completely ridiculous. Like they're just <laughs> throwing away reams of science just because they don't they don't believe it, right? Hmm. And here at home, the conspiracy is that. Climate change is a hoax perpetrated by our new, newly elected liberal government to create a carbon tax and destroy the oil industry in Alberta. <laughs> um, have you heard of uh, physicist David Grimes? Mm-hmm. Um, he put out the, uh, the, the Plus One journal. Uh, it's basically an estimation of uh, the time required for a conspiracy theory to fail given the amount of people that needs to be involved. Okay. Okay. So he calculated that the maximum time before failure for several large-scale conspiracy theories. So the first one that I have here is uh, the moon landing hoax. It would require 411,000 people involved and would fail in 3.68 years. Climate change? That uh, fraud would require 405,000 people and would fail in 3.7 years. Uh, vaccination conspiracy would require at least 22,000 people. Uh, this is without drug companies and would fail in 3.15 years. So these are the amounts of people that it would take to perpetrate this hoax. Yes. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you're talking a lot of people. And to put that many people together, I mean, the, the last one that I have here is the suppressed cancer cure conspiracy, which is a, a big one. I I've feel. heard of that one. Yeah. Um, apparently the cure is out there, but, you know, uh, it, 
the book basically, uh, or sorry, the journal uh, estimates that it would require 714,000 people. 714,000. 714,000 people in order to make this possible as a hoax or fraud, whatever you want to call it, and would fail in 3.17 years. See, I don't understand the, the, the cancer cure conspiracy because, again, it's because people don't have a basic understanding of science. Yeah. Cancer isn't just one disease. Yeah. Cancer is a multitude of different ailments, and it's a multitude of different cancers. So there is no one cure to this thing. This mm -hmm. is a, it's a mass. That's why cancer research is so fundamental, yeah. right? Because it's so widespread, it's so vast of a, of a subject matter to study, mm -hmm. and you know, there is no one cure for this. Yeah. And if we if we had it, why would people be hiding it? Wouldn't we want to save humanity from extinction. Well, that's or the thing. Like, I mean, the people who control these drugs, if there was a cure, it's all about the money, right? So you don't want to just put out a cure for something that's already making millions of dollars for this one guy. Right. You know? So it's like, ugh. Yeah, another aspect of the, the cancer conspiracy is that the amount of money that cancer research is making mm -hmm. is the reason why we haven't found a cure yet. It's because the, it, it's, the money is controlling research. They're getting funds from the government. They're getting funds from private donors, and they just want that money to keep circulating. Yeah. Well, that's fucking bullshit. <laughs> they want to keep. They want to keep getting that money so they can continue the research to find a cure for all these different cancers. <laughs> but that that's why they keep requesting the money for it. That's yeah. why the money keeps flowing. For sure. And but the same thing. I, just going back to the. I'm ranting now, <laughs> yeah. but the the whole climate change thing. But ninety-seven percent of climate or of, so, of the science community is in agreement that climate change is real, and mankind or humanity as a whole has had a negative impact on it. We're yeah. accelerating the process, yeah. but people fail to realize that. Like, oh well, you know, cl the climate's been changing since the beginning of time. Well, yeah, but we're accelerating the process. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what well, used to be called it used to be called global warming. Now they changed it to climate change. <laughs> yeah, well, that's so we can take into account all the different aspects of the climate change problem. You yeah, know, the weather not, is just so unpredictable. I mean, it, weather yeah. weather is a sign. Weather is stuff that happens. Climate overall is wider, widespread. Yep. It's it's more general than yep. that. Like. It, they change it from, like I said, they change it from global warming to climate change because it, it's more than just the planet warming up. Yeah. That's one aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And people are saying, well, you know, what about the ice age that they predict? We're, we're just coming out of an ice age, yada, yada. Well, people, 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 please <laughs> do some. The, I actually have a link that I'm going to post up, uh, which completely destroys climate change deniers' arguments. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them. Yeah. Like the CO2 argument, well, CO2 is plant food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if we pump out more CO2 in the atmosphere, what do you think happens? <laughs> right? The planet gets warmer, plants die because they need more water to survive, yep. and that's it. They're, they're dead. We destroy ourselves. Mm -hmm. like, the level of atmospheric CO2 right now is beyond the tipping point, yeah. and that's a problem. It's going to be a problem for our children and our grandchildren to deal with. Yeah, no. Future generations are pretty much screwed at this point. Pretty Since much. we already passed that point, there's nothing we can do. Yeah, well, that's that's my climate change rant. <laughs> <laughs> You've been working too hard. I've been working way too hard. <laughs> Let's get back to it. So what are some of the, the other things that you have here? Um, Let's see here. What's a good one to talk about? I'm not sure which one to go with, I guess. But. <laughs> <laughs> Just going through some notes. Um, I guess we can talk about the JFK thing a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. Um, do you know any? Do you know anything more about uh, the JFK assassination conspiracy? Um. Well, I mean, we could talk about like kind of the. Uh, there's a theory out there. Um, this is Catherine Young. She writes that uh, every real conspiracy has had at least four characteristic features. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> groups, not isolated individuals, illegal or sinister aims, not ones that would benefit society as a whole, orchestrated acts, so not a series of uh, spontaneous or haphazard ones, and secret planning and not, you know, public discussion. Hmm. So, I mean, these are all things that surround the JFK assassination, right? So, if you're, you know, if you're a true conspiracy theorist, these are the four attributes that are going to kind of Come together to bring this theory up. Hmm. <laughs> so I mean, it's all about you know whether he was mind controlled uh, and 
you know, did out the assassination. I think the whole thing is all about why. Why was it done? Uh, you know, was it to just? I think it was more that uh, he was not following the new world order as you know the, the secret government <laughs> that really? is yeah within the background, and he did not comply with this whole secret government's orders, and that's why the whole assassination happened. I, that that seems. That seems really out there. Oh, of course. And that's what a conspiracy theory is, right? Like, yeah, I guess so. It's supposed to be out there. It's, yeah. <laughs> I've heard a couple of different reasons why he did what he did. And one of them was that, um, I, like you said, he had some ties to the, the New World Order or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, others are saying that they took him out because he was going to make a deal with Cuba or something. Mm. It's, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why JFK was assassinated. To be honest, like it could, he could have like Oswald could have just been this crazy guy who shot the president. Yeah, for right? sure. But definitely could have been. But yeah. I mean, you know, you look at the whole Illuminati. Uh, that's the big one, right? Like that's, Illuminati control yeah. everything. <laughs> so I mean, I, I think it had to do with that uh, that he wasn't following or complying with the orders of the Illuminati and. Well, let's talk about the Illuminati for, for a little while. Yeah. So uh, there are a lot of conspiracy theories out there that say that the entertainment industry or a lot of recording artists are secret members of the Illuminati because they're flashing different Illuminati signs whenever they're doing interviews or walking the red carpet or whatever. I think like Beyonce and Jay-Z are the popular ones on that. Yeah, Lady Gaga also Lady Gaga, apparently yeah. because she does the eye thing, uh, you know, the, the eye in the triangle, yeah. that's the Illuminati symbol, which, you know, conspiracy theorists say is on the American American currency. Yeah. Um, it is there. <laughs> <laughs> it is there. It's the pyramid with the eye on yeah. it. So it's, yeah. <laughs> it, well, it's supposed to represent provenance, I think, hmm. um, in actuality. But they associate it to the Illuminati, the all-seeing eye, because they control everything. Yeah. Right? Um, what do you, what's your take on the Illuminati? What do you, do you think they're... Well, see, the, the actual organization... The Bavarian Illuminati were an actual thing, hmm. right? They they were a group of scientists, and il the name Illuminati means illuminated or enlightened, yeah. right? So these were these were people who got together and discussed enlightening subjects. Hmm. Um, they would talk about science and and revolutionary thought, and they were banned at some point in Bavaria because they outlawed some secret societies. Oh, so they that. went underground. Okay, and from there, um, the name stuck. Hmm. You know, but people associated all these weird conspiracy theories to them. Yeah. How they're you know secretly controlling the universe or the world or whatever. And uh, yeah, so what do you I don't know, what do you think? <laughs> it's a lot of craziness. I mean, it's a lot can, of craziness. What, what can you say? I mean, oh, geez, to to think that like there there potentially could be a, a sort of like secret kind of government that we have no idea about and that they're in complete control of everything that we do. Uh, even the things that we see, you know, like uh, apparently they they have complete control over the uh, the, the broadcasting on the news, the things that we see, right? So it's like, yeah. You know, and then you have people like Justin Bieber, who's got his crazy eyes in that one video. I don't know if you've seen that. <laughs> apparently he's some like that. crazy, freaky, like uh, reptilian alien or something. But if you've seen this video, it's basically his eyes are just like it looks like he's really high on drugs. Uh, well, but, he's probably really high on drugs. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I think it was uh they they, they took him in for a fighting or something, and uh, they arrested him. And his the, the prison photo or even the video that they had on that, uh, it was just you look at that video and. <laughs> <laughs> so Justin Bieber is not one of the reptilian super people controlling controlling the planet. I don't know if he's the one controlling or just another pawn. <laughs> so. Well, let, let's get back to mind control for a second. There's a there's a there's a conspiracy theory out there that says that fluoride in the drinking water is actually a method of mind control. Yeah, I've heard that. It, that how how does that even work? Like how does how would you control people's minds using fluoride? Huh. You that, can't. Yeah, right? <laughs> that's like oh man, it's really out there. Um, that's that's what gets me. Like people who people who actually perpetrate these things don't seem to have any kind of reason why someone would go to go to these giant lengths to do it yeah or they or provide evidence to support why they're saying it well that's the thing i mean going back to what i was talking about earlier it's it, it takes a lot of people in order to you know make these things happen i right. mean if it was a hoax it would take thousands of people to like get, come together and 
plan this. Exactly. Like it's like some crazy master plan that they have to like, you know, put together in order for these things to happen. Right, you know? and requiring that amount of people, you'd think that one of them, if it were true, would break their silence yep. and then say what actually happened. Like, yeah, it's true. This is what you know. We've been perpetrating this for. I wanna, I wanna get out. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd have people leaving the circle. Yeah, and coming clean about what's happening. Yeah, but that never happens. Well, I think that would never happen because. You know, it's the whole fear of being killed if you do. But I, t the odds are against that actually happening. Well, I look at Snowden. He had to friggin' go all the way to Russia just to like flee. <laughs> well, well, that's different. I mean, Edward Snowden actually d he provided stuff that that truly happened. Exactly, right? but that's the thing. He actually provided evidence that you know there's so much going on in the background. And he feared for his life after that. Okay, yeah, sure. But okay, let, let's assume that the Illuminati are real hmm. and someone tries to blow the whistle. Yeah. Has that happened yet? No. Exactly. So Probably because they took him out before they could have didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that might be a possibility. Mm -hmm. But I just think the odds are stacked against these conspiracy theories from being for true. Sure. Just for because sure. we haven't – no one has been able to come forward and provide any credible evidence to support anything that's happened. For right? sure, yeah. Um, but it, let's look at the UFO conspiracy. Yeah. Re-examining what we talked about in episode one, uh, the, the former head of Skunk Works at Lockheed Martin claiming that they're using all this alien technology, he just said that. Yeah. He didn't. He didn't give us anything to go on mm -hmm. when he actually when he came out and said that. Yeah. So to me, I think he's making it up. He could be. He could very well be making it up. <laughs> what if he's not though? What if he's not? That would be awesome. <laughs> but that's the thing. You have to rely on his word alone in order to believe it. Right. So it's like, uh, you know. Yeah, word alone is not enough to go on. Yeah, no, for sure. Not, yeah. not for a skeptic like you, that's no, for sure. No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I don't, I, it seemed, it sounds tempting to believe in something like the New World Order that's coming about to control global population through calling of the human species and, you know, just creating this police state that we're perpetually in. Mm -hmm. That sounds credible on the surface. Yeah. But when you start to pick it apart, Everything kind of unravels. Yeah. You start to attack it from different angles, and the entire theory just collapses in on it under its own weight of ridiculousness. Yeah, yeah. Just because, like what you were saying, the amount of people it would take to perpetrate this is absolutely astonishing. Yep. You can't get that many people together and be like, look, look, we're going to control the world. Here's how we're doing it. <laughs> unless you're doing mind control. Unless you're, <laughs> unless you're doing mind control. Well, okay. I have to ask, just because we're on the topic, right? What is your favorite conspiracy theory? My favorite conspiracy yeah. theory. Wow, I would. Well, I think my favorite one to hate is the climate change conspiracy theory. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know. That's what. What's the worst? Uh, I like the black flag ones. Okay, yeah. Let's. Well, those are some of them are actually true. Yeah, I, th that's the thing, and uh, like the Northwood papers. Uh, yeah, I, I saw that. Um, I mean, we've even been affected here. The whole Ottawa like shooting that we had at Parliament there. Apparently that was a black flag too. Really? I, I didn't hear about that. Well, there was evidence, like there's a video out there. If I can find it, we'll post it on uh, the links there. But uh, yeah, uh, there's <laughs> evidence of like the people that were in the area when the shooting was happening were already in movement before sh the actual shootings were happening. So it's like people were already prepared in a sense that like they're already fleeing before anything even happened. Oh, come on. And then they're like, you know, kind of backtracking, and then once the shooting does start happening, all of a sudden they're fleeing again. So it's like you know, there's things like that. There's the uh, the glove. There, uh, I, can, I can't remember exactly what was with the glove, but um, something about there's no blood on it, or there's something to do with the glove. So there's a whole conspiracy theory surrounding that Ottawa shooting itself. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll I'll, I'll find the video. Uh, we'll post it on the uh, description. And you can judge for yourself, you know, it's just another conspiracy theory. It's nothing you have to believe, but it's there. See, what gets me is conspiracy theories that spring up when a tragic event like that occurs. For sure. Like the 9-11 conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. uh, that just, it, it bothers me because people died and we, others are just jumping on that and creating all kinds of crazy nonsense surrounding it. For sure. Um, like... Yeah. But there, there's always questions surrounding these things, right? right. So as an example, the uh, the owner of uh, the, the World Trade Centers. Who took out that insurance policy. Who took policy. out the insurance policy. What was it, a week before the actual buildings went right. down? The question is why? Why Why would he do that? You know, like, 
maybe but, maybe it was coincidence that maybe he just had to do a renewal type of thing for every year, you know. But like it just happened to land at a certain point. Sure, yeah, but yeah. So, sometimes things just happen. Yeah, exactly. Coincidences like, do happen. Exactly. Uh, Richard Dawkins has this really cool video of him uh, demonstrating just how meaningless coincidences are. Mm. And we'll again we'll post the link in the description. But like uh, that, you know, it makes sense that because things just happen sometimes. Yeah. And him taking out the um, that insurance policy was probably just a giant coincidence. For sure. But That's I how I feel. I mean, yeah. you know. It, to me, it's just like, well, it's just an insurance claim. I mean, you can't really, you know, put that as evidence towards anything. Mm -hmm. You know, the other thing that, you know, it's the third building that went down as well. Like, there's the whole conspiracy as to why that went down. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? So there apparently there was, um, what was it, bombs in their generator rooms that went off and took down the building itself. Well, to take down a building, it still takes planning, right? So right. it's like... There, it's just a whole other like yeah, topic well, that we can go on there. Well, some people were saying that they had seen construction workers going around the World Trade Centers a few days prior to 9-11 and planting explosives in strategic locations and things, mm. and then saying that the whole thing came down like a controlled demolition. Yeah. Granted, it does look like that. Yeah, for sure. But we have never seen buildings like this go down before. Yeah. And that's why we have no basis for comparison. Right there, there is nothing to compare this situation to because it has never happened in our in our modern history. Yeah, like no planes have ever struck two buildings and destroyed them before. Right, we not have, two buildings. The Empire State Building did get hit, but that was just like a small plane that went into it. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not the same as like you know these jets that yeah, exactly. you know, fly through. The, so and yeah, no, there's just a whole difference between the two, but it still has happened where yeah. you know you get a plane that flies into a building. Sure, okay, <laughs> fine. But you know what I mean, though. Like it, nothing of this magnitude has ever transpired. Yeah. So we people can conjecture as much as they want because there's nothing to there's nothing to compare it to. Yeah. Um, uh, the 9-11 thing also with the uh, people point to the fact that they were doing NATO was conducting aerial exercises that had a striking similarity to, to what was actually happening. Yeah. How a plane had been hijacked and it was on its way towards these buildings, right? Yeah. That That's a documented thing that, that happened. Yeah. But again, probably just a coincidence. Wasn't that happening within the same day too? It was. It's <laughs> on this, they were doing the exercise the same day. So when they radioed in, the pilots were like, is this real or is this part of the exercise? Yeah. People will jump on that as evidence to support that it's a conspiracy, that it actually... I wouldn't place. hesitate on that one. I mean, it seems way too coincidental that that is happening as the you know attacks are going on. Sure, but like we just discussed, coincidences happen, happen. all the time. I get that, yes, for sure. But no, I, I totally understand why some people would be like, this is, you know, it's proof that this is a black flag event. No. See, another, um, another angle to that would be that you know, the Pentagon knew something was happening. They didn't have any specifics, yeah. but they let it happen. Yeah. In order to pe perpetuate the war. Yeah. That I could buy. That I could buy too. Um, because yeah, like it, it, it allowed them to go into the Middle East right away. Yeah. It was the perfect opportunity. They knew something was up, so mm -hmm. they took it. Yeah. Because right? they sure. wanted to go in. They wanted to go into the Middle East and get the oil, right? And the whole aftermath after that was all about the uh, the WMDs, the weapons of mass destruction. Mm -hmm. They went out searching for them. They found nothing. They found nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and then it turned into, okay, well, we're going to have to find Bin Laden. Yeah. Of thing. So it's like... They changed their story for going into Iraq so many times. Yeah. Like originally, it was, like you said, the, the weapons of mass destruction thing. Then it was to bring democracy to the Middle East. Then it was to find Bin Laden, who was nowhere near Iraq. Mm -hmm. You know, it, yeah, like, it was... It was to facilitate their entry and get the oil. Yeah. You know, there's so much money to be made because they're sitting on a gold mine. Yeah. Black gold mine. <laughs> yeah, like uh, the 9-11 conspiracy is one that we could dedicate an entire hour to, to just talking about this. There's so many experts who, who are coming to testify on both sides of the story. Yeah. You know, some scientists are saying that, you know, um, jet fuel is hot enough to, to melt steel beams. Others are like, nope, that's not possible. Then you got the architectures who are saying the exact opposite, that no, yeah. it's impossible for it to get to that point. So right. it's like... Who are you going to believe? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know who to believe. The experts on one side or the experts on the other side. So it's kind of like... Ah, you know. Both sides are cherry-picking their data to support um, their individual stances on that. For sure. Uh, 
I, it needs an independent kind of investigation. Yeah. Um, who is it? Jill Stein, the um, one of the third party candidates in the uh, in the U.S. election, hmm. said that uh, during an interview that she would bring back the 9/11 Truth Com- Truth Commission to get to the bottom of this because there's some unanswered questions. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's a good idea? Huh. Yeah. Why yeah. not? Why not? Yeah. Well, I think if it's going to like if it ends up exposing something, I mean, you know. Well, the the report is finalized. Mm-hmm. Like the the report came out a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everything is out there, mm-hmm. but people don't want to believe it. They don't want to accept that as as truth. That's truth, yeah, for sure. Because people died. It was a tragic event. Yeah. You know, it, it's forever etched in our collective memory as a society and as a you know as a people. Mm-hmm. Um, so. People want to keep digging at it. It's like the JFK thing. It, the FBI investigated it. They had their official um, official report put out. Mm-hmm. People don't buy it. Yeah. You know, people cling to an idea for a long, long time if they don't get the answers that they want. Yeah, and like if you look at all the uh, the shootings that are going on in the in the states right now, you know, the school shootings as an example, or the uh, the theater shootings that are going mm-hmm. on. Those are all conspiracy theories as well. And as soon as a shooting happens, the first thing they jump to is the mind control. Oh, this person is being mind controlled into doing these things, taking out all these people. And, you know, there's a whole, you know, uh, subplot to this where it's like, you know, there's, it's all about gun control potentially that the, you know, the NRA doesn't want to lose the gun control. So they have to make these events happen in order to keep that control in there. And, you know, keep their arms and stuff but yeah no it's it's just a whole lot of craziness so. I don't, yeah like it's i don't i don't i don't understand why people use tragedies like that as an excuse to come up with these these crackpot theories like people people died yeah you no know? like why can't it just be someone who shot somebody else yeah you know it, people need more than that but i think that's the other side of it where conspiracy theorists will actually believe that you know it's not just somebody shooting somebody else it's somebody controlling that person in order to shoot these people for a whole other you know yeah uh, but yeah I, <laughs> yeah it's it's like the climate change one yeah. you know, the same principle yeah. there's some nefarious back end to it that uh, that's perpetrating these acts mm-hmm. right I don't think I don't think it's that crazy like it just some things just happen yeah some things are just unfortunate and they happen and there's nothing there's nothing else to it yeah you know if there if there's a conspiracy out there bring the evidence to support what you're saying right yeah. because if you just go out and say shit <laughs> <laughs> what's the point of that yeah um here i had a little point here if i can find it <clears throat> i know we talked about the characteristics and stuff but mm-hmm. i wanted to look at Basically, once it's not a conspiracy theory, what is it? And they're calling it basically uh, investigative journalism or historical analysis. Okay. Yeah. So once it's been proven that it's no longer conspiracy theory, you can't call it a conspiracy theory anymore. Sure. That makes sense. (laughs) Yeah, historical analysis is a good one. I mean, like you're looking at things from a a historical perspective, right? Yeah. Yeah. But... Okay, so yeah, what's what's that about? Um, well, I mean, in criminal law, conspiracy is an agreement between two or more persons to commit a you know a crime at some time in the future, and one basic uh, uh, American uh, police academy uh, defines it as like uh, when a crime requires a large number of people, a uh, conspiracy is formed. Mm-hmm. So you know, it's. <laughs> I'm just I'm I'm thinking back to the the amount of people it takes to perpetuate these type of things. Yeah, yeah. That that's it's those are big numbers. Those are huge numbers, and like whether you're actually paying these people to do these things or through mind control, whatever it is, it's still a lot of people in order for it to happen, right? In order for this whatever conspiracy theory it is that's happening. So it's like, ah, jeez. Did they did they talk about the numbers to perpetuate nine like a nine eleven type conspiracy in there? That did not come up, unfortunately. Because to me, that would require a shitload of people. Yeah, for sure. Like. Yeah. Way more than like the hundred of thousands that I said in the uh, yeah and the other ones there, so it's like no. <laughs> like that would require cooperation on a massive scale between you know different countries. Yeah, Just a, a lot of these other conspiracies are kind of localized, but something like nine eleven or the UFO conspiracy hmm. are you know they're 
they have many different players involved. Yeah. Yeah, and I think going back to like the whole uh, you know global domination of the new world order, you know, there's certain organizations that they say could potentially have that uh, you know already set in place. But as an example, like Satanism, who <laughs> you can't accept just anybody into their group, right? So it's kind of like you can kind of take them out of the running for a world domination, but the Illuminati, who is uh, you know accepting anybody that's willing to be part of their end of day plans you know it, it's <laughs> you can involve a lot of people into these uh events and you know make something out of it if you really wanted to because that's the whole brainwashing that's the whole mind control that's yeah is there a way for us to know if we're being brainwashed or mind controlled apparently not if you've already been brainwashed or mind controlled you don't know that you are so we might have been brainwashed into doing this entire podcast for sure i feel like we did <laughs> <laughs> Well, on that note, uh, I guess this would be a good place to wrap it up. Sounds good. So, yeah, uh, this has been Critical Junction Episode 4. I'm Mark. I'm Jose. And we now have a Facebook page, so don't forget to like us on Facebook, at Critical Junction Pod, because Critical Junction was already taken, uh, which kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but, Guys, we don't care about the likes or anything. We just like you to share your experiences, share some stories, put something in the comment field that you know we can talk about here, and it's just for the heck of it. It's just for shits and giggles, just yeah. for us. Yeah. Do it for us. Do it for us. You love us. <laughs> so, so yeah, if you have a conspiracy theory you'd like us to talk about on a future podcast, let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and share and subscribe. Uh, again, thanks for listening, and we'll catch you again next time.